Alright guys, so we're working on a geothermal here. It's basically a heat pump, water sourced heat pump for those who don't have those around where you're at. So not a huge deal. Keep on watch and the principles are all the same. Just condensers now, a coax coil with water going through it. We were out here doing a service check on this thing, a PM, one of the guys was, and they were having doubts about whether it was performing right. Well, circuit A is running and we wanted to know whether it's put out any heat. Well, the evaporator here does not have any heat that's noticeable. So you've got your A circuit here. I don't have to feel anything on it. There's A coming back. This should be your hot going in. It's not very hot at all. It's warm, but it's not hot. Not jack coming back. Could be low on charge. I don't know exactly what's going on. A's the one of the problem ones. B is supposedly working right, but we don't know that for certain yet. I'm assuming they're sharing two individual circuits on the evaporator, because down here they've got two coax coils and two compressors. I've never seen this model before, and we do a lot of carrier that was uh, made by Climate Master. Well, if you look at this, they've got two individual little compressors here. We're going to check these things to see what's going on. You could have a reversing valve back enough to be low on charge. I see some hackery on the breeze there. It's sweating pretty good. You would think it's feeding. You definitely are coming back. It's boiling it off. You can feel a lot of cold here where it's going back to the coax coil. We're going to dig in and see what we've got. But like I said, that a compressor there is working. You've got some really handyman work there at the wire nut. The uh, tops of the compressors there, plastic's cracked. So let's start checking pressures and see what we've got first. We're running uh, 8 degree of uh, VAP and a 67 degree discharge. We just hooked right on there above the reversing valve and right there on the suction line. Looks to me like we're low. This is an R22 system. They probably have a leak, wouldn't surprise me. That 20 of the evaporators leak. At least you can get into it pretty easy here. That don't sound very good. The other compressor kicked on. Wow. So the fans speed it up. It's starting to get heat on that other circuit. All right, so we got it on there, but I think it's noisy. That one's probably working okay. You can see the humidifier's not being used no more. It's all gummed up. Valve there's all gummed up. That's what happens with the crappy water. This is a pump and dump, so this is coming right from the well tank there. Going through the system, I got a solenoid on it. It's reduced flow, usually about a gallon and a half of flow uh, per ton. So it's uh, coming up over and going out to tile field of some sort. The other circuit just kicked on, or I should say the other circuit's pressures. A little more in line there. Boy, this camera is not as clear as a GoPro. So we're running 28 and 87 on that one. Depending on your water temperature, that's you know, going to give you a ballpark there. But man, that thing is a rattle trap. That compressor's going out next. It's not we just started sniffing looking for the leak. Shut the system down. What I notice is, is the solenoid is not closing. So it's wasting water right now. Don't know if they got a bypass turned on or what. I don't know if it's... I know I didn't care for these. It feels, it feels hot. So it feels like it's energized. It probably ain't wired right. Let's see if this is wired right here. So we've got the wire unhooked and it's still dumping water. That's going to waste a lot of well water and it's going to foul up your coax coil. This thing is a 99. It's lived 21 years. She said uh, if we can just get it going, she's planning on replacing it next year, which, you know, we've all heard that. It's definitely not saving them any money, let's just say that. Here's the line for it. Yeah, that stopped it. 
Yeah, it's just a waste. Total waste. On and off. On to the left, off to the right, but if you don't know which way you already are, see if you can get on there. You know what? Let's shut the water off first. I, uh, I do not like these valves anyway. I like the Taco valves that close slowly. These here have a tendency to slam shut and then it'll make the pipes jar. There it stopped. Now, huh, interesting. Ooh, I think that's a, uh, may have been stuck. Hmm. Yeah, because water's wanting to leak out now. There we go. All right, let's see if it opens up on its own now. It was, it was definitely sticking. That valve needs replaced. I'd be curious if it opens up or not. Let me turn it back on. Yeah, you can see oil. Oil right in there. Started to go off. And it stopped. There's almost no pressure on this thing. Well, we're not going to fix anything right now anyhow. Okay, if it's in a coil. What I wanted to do originally was just make sure there's no humongous leaks. And if it's not, then just recharge it and move on. You should be able to get something right here on that. Yeah, some of these... Yeah, it's really weak. Yeah, this thing's just in crap condition, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and charge it up and then rescan it. It uh, only holds about 30 ounces of refrigerant, so it's not probably much more than a pound and a half low. So we need a 4 to 7 degree subcooling. Superheat should average around 13 to 17. That's at 50 degree water, and same subcooling and superheat pretty much for the 30 degree water. It should be somewhere around the 45 degree to 50 degree water area. So it's coming straight out of the well. We've got it turned back on. It's running in first stage. There's quite a delay, I guess, with this thermostat from what I was told. So what we're going to do is already strip back Y1 and Y2. We're going to jump those together. That should push the fan up and bring the other compressor on like that. Now we need to know whether or not this valve is open, which hopefully it is. We'll know real quick because it'll trip out if not, which it's pretty cold there, so I'd say it's working. So it must have opened. I find it just easier to add with hoses than it is a dink with the freaking probes in this application. Let's go ahead and add half a pound to get us started. So we're running 56 and 154 on the circuit A that was low. We're running 53 and 175 on the circuit B that seemed like it was working fairly close. We got 10 degrees sub points, so we're a little high, super heat's high. To 24, so it appears that CXV may not be doing its job just yet. We gotta give it a little while yet. May give it a little bit extra, especially since it's leaking out anyhow. It don't really matter because it's a little over. It may work out being just about right when it's all said and done. It's slowly coming down. It just is not very quick. Right now we're about a pound, so they're not extreme compared to some of them out there, but I'm not afraid to take her up there 13 pounds, or 13 degrees subcooling, or 14 even, because that's where a lot of them are at on some of the newer stuff, but we'll see how this goes here. Taking it up to about 11 and a half, 12 degree subcooling, we're at 14 on the superheat, so we're pretty close on that one. I'm gonna switch hoses over to the other one, take the probes off. And, okay, we're on the other circuit now. We got 10.8 on subcooling, 8 degrees and dropping on superheat. So we got a TXD that's most likely starting to go bad on that one. If it don't back off here in a minute, which it doesn't seem like it is. Probably why it's so loud. It's probably been chugging liquid for a while now. Uh, we don't need to add anything to that one. The subcooling's above us. We rated them out. So we're fine on that. 
she's just ready to be retired. It's it's had a good life. It's done a lot better than most of the stuff that's on the market today. Take the gauges off. Total investment, one pound three, four ounces, so a pound and a half. We've tightened the Schrader cores up on a few of these. And pointing out past the edge of the port there. And then you've got missing gaskets there. And what you end up doing is actually pushing down on the Schrader core, which then makes it leak. In half time, it's usually because somebody over cranked on the rubber seals because they think the whole dang thing leaked out through the Schrader core, which is bull crap. What I'll do sometimes, I got a dedicated one, but take that right out of your Klein 10 and 1, 11 and 1, 62 and 1, whatever. And uh, you can get in tight spots if you don't have your little dedicated one available. So it's charged up, it's leaking in multiple spots. You can see oil on the distributor. Shiny oil here on that, and that's not even on the circuit that was low. You can see oil down here. So we've got it in multiple different spots. It's not even worth screwing with. I'm actually not hearing that water valve running. It actually sounds like it must have been stuck, maybe with some iron or whatever. And now it's broke loose, but myself personally, I believe we need to replace it. She can always use that on the new one if she gets a new one. Now, for those out there that don't know what a water source heat pump is, this right here is your coax coil. This right here is refrigerant line going through. Usually, I believe, if they're smart, they'll put it on the outside, water go through the center, but a lot of times they don't. That way, if it leaks, the water is on the inside and doesn't leak into the refrigerant. Vice versa, you know, if it was on the inside, then the water goes into the refrigerant. Kind of a crappy design, huh? Anyhow, that's the two coax coils for the refrigerant circuit, and that's the one for the hot water generator. So what they do in the summertime, instead of running the hot discharge gas through the water and then right out into the field, they'll run it through this coil first. And then you're getting free hot water to your water heater, and they'll circulate back and forth to the uh, water heater. Then it'll come to this one. Kind of like reheat, same thing. Otherwise, you've got the same components. You just you can't, can't overdo it. You can't uh, make it out to be more than what it is. You've got a compressor, creating flow, hot gas coming to either to the coax coil, out of the coax coil to TXV, and into the evaporator. Or if it's summertime or wintertime, it's going to come hot gas straight to the evaporator, which is now your condenser, comes out, goes through the TXV then to the coax coil and back to the compressor. Just a basic refrigerant circuit. Just depends on what you want to add to it after that, whether it's you know high pressure switches, low pressure switches, whatever, temperature sensors. So the system's gonna run. That's kind of scary the way they've got that cap there on that compressor. But like I said, this thing is not worth putting a lot of time and money into, but it is running. It is back to normal for now until it leaks out again. Most geothermals have a circulator that takes it out to the ground loop, the water center. Uh, this one here, like I said, is just using the pump from the well. That's why they got such a huge expansion tank, so the pump isn't constantly kicking on and off, on and off. And just goes through, goes through the system first, comes out of the system, then it hits this stop. You always want to keep your coax coil pressurized. That way it's less sediment, less buildup. I forget exactly what it is, but basically it's best to be under pressure. And then it comes up and goes out to a field loop somewhere out there in the field natural drainage or whatever and uh, that's about it i mean there's nothing major to this the systems are expensive but we are up here in northern ohio uh, winters get below 30 degrees unlike the southern states so for us if you don't have natural gas and all you have is propane and you have the government screwing you price of gas going up like it is now this year in 2021 you're best off to go with the electrical. Anyhow, that's how the system works. We're back again to replace the valve here that we found bad. The new one here is a Taco valve, which it's got an end switch on it. The well pump is just kicked on, so we're gonna go ahead and shut down that particular pipe going to it. So it should be this one right here. We got it uh, turned off, had to go up to the thermostat to turn it off because there's no breakers down here, no disconnect switches. What I'm gonna do on this is I'm going to wire it so the end switch actually works. This one here did not have an end switch. 
So this one here, whether it open or not, it could run. This one will require it to open the in switch. So it's going to power open on 24 volts here. Once it comes all the way open, it's going to close a switch called an in switch. Then allow the current to flow through this onto Y terminal. So it won't be able to run unless that's in there. So we'll have to wire that up for that. They glued everything so close together that there's no place to take any of that apart. So what we're going to have to do is undo it from here completely get rid of all this here i really don't see any good reason for this piece here other than to possibly flush it we're just going to have to redo this t so we've got some fittings here we're just going to redo got my handy dandy bucket here along with my standard milwaukee little wannabe pack out but not really a pack out but it's a whole lot cheaper i'm a big believer in doing teflon tape along with some sort of pipe dope Gonna double that up and then uh, screw that uh, valve there on it. I've not had any leaks that way, whether I'm doing boilers, water lines, or whatever. Now you can get away sometimes with just the tape. Sometimes you can get away with just the pipe dope, but I've had times where I've had either or leak, but generally never both. You are able to pull this little pin there from that piece right there. Really can't do this wrong. It's a ball valve, depending on how you want the head to fit on there. Okay, we got it in there. I'm gonna leave the head so it faces over here so you can kind of see it because we got lots of room over here. Then what I usually do is go with the threads and wipe off any excess dope. Probably just gonna use some 90s because we've got a load of 90s all here, here, and there, and it's not like we're really that restrictive. That little silver thing there is a flow restrictor. That's so it only lets a certain amount of gallons per minute through. You only need about one and a half gallons per ton on a open loop system like this that way you ain't moving any more water than what you need to there's only so much water in the ground and it's only coming in so quick it's got to go through all the aquifers so far we got most of it in place we've been doubling up like i've been saying for the tape and uh dope we're pretty much lining it up right here we've got it uh t in there again so we can flush it even though there's a lot of crap in this system these probably should have been replaced but nobody uh Nobody's been flushing it for a while. Guys, I can't stress enough. You wanna make dang sure that you're cleaning these pipes. Don't just be gluing them together. They will pop apart. All right, so we got the new one wired up here. We've got uh, two wires there. The blue and yellow is gonna be my Y in and Y out. White and red is gonna be my common and the uh, signal coming from the board for when it actually calls for cooling or heating. And uh, right now, it's, I think it's in a closed position because I didn't move it at all. So anyhow, we got it there and then we just ran it back down here, tore out some of that wire that was there. And we got it right there on that top red out of A, commons come to shared common there. And then we just looped Y in yellow and came back on blue. All right, apparently that must have a delay in there. It has to get the signal from Y. I went ahead and hooked Y to my 24 volts on my input there. And there it goes. And now, now it'll close the circuit and come back. So I could have done it with three wires. We just covered it, combined it together back down here. I could have done it over there. You can see it, hear it coming through and the system's running. So the nice thing is it won't uh, run unless that valve opens. Now the only problem with that is trying to think here there is a chance that when that Y breaks that's gonna break power to it and it'll stay in the open position forever so we can't do that either we got to have a constant constant power gosh that sucks unless it's a spring open let's let's find out here I, I could have read the instructions but that's not the way I work the simple way here to test this is to pull the power off here and it closes there we go so let's go ahead and do this back again this is kind of nice so there we go blinking and then boom opens up creates a path back you can hear it going through the uh, restrictor looks like they got a shock absorber or uh, water hammering or water hammer valve um, other than that guys that should wrap this one up that's all i had to do back here so until next time we'll catch you guys on the next one